Hey guys, things don't always go as planned when you're flipping bikes for a living, and this is one of those projects. We ran into some trouble with this bike and ended up needing to replace the whole frame. So it seems like this is gonna end up being the bike, but it ends up being a completely different one. So that's what's going on with this video. Thanks for clicking in. Here we go. All right, per the use, disconnect the brakes, pop the wheels off quick. Then I relax the derailers. Ooh, these are gummy shifters. So we're gonna take some one step here. So with the derailleur in its most relaxed state, we can push it in and get that piece of housing out. And now we can lube this cable, but we don't stop there. We'll go up here and disconnect this and disconnect that. Then we can further with the front derailleur in its most relaxed state, you can pull it out. That gives enough slack on that where you can disconnect that one too. Then moving to the front. Take your bottle of lube and disconnect all your cables and get out of the way of the camera. And we just Find our cables and put some tri-flow on them. Little dab will do you, just a couple drops along the way. All right. Drop some down the front brake cable here. Everything on this bike is, is pretty clean, pretty good lube on it. I don't know where it was born. Um, Des Moines, Iowa the bikes bike shop sticker shop quality diamondback really nice bike here just fine probably the most important piece of housing is this rear loop especially on these bikes where moisture can come in from the top here so then um, actually before I go ahead and put all these cables back let's uh, polish up this frame a bit it's really pretty clean so I'm just gonna hit it with some uh, furniture polish. I just get the cheapest stuff available. Spray the frame down and then give everything a good wiping. Hey bike farmers, I just wanted to take this lull in the action to let you know how much I appreciate that you've clicked in to watch this video. Now that I've been at it a little bit, I'm starting to learn why everybody's always asking for more. The AdSense money is just barely enough to make it worth starting a channel. If I wanna sustain this for the long term, I'm gonna need everyone's help. Now don't get me wrong, your attention is enough. Don't feel obligated to give more, but I've tried to make it as easy as possible. You can always click the super thanks, that's the heart with the dollar sign in the middle of it, or consider a monthly membership. The monthly membership will give you a little star next to your name, and if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments, I'll see the star, and when I see it, I'll definitely give you an answer. You'll also have access to a little more behind the scenes action that non-members can't see. With all that said, thank you so much, and let's get back to some bikes. Okay, now that the frame has been wiped down at least once, a preliminary wiping, we can hook our cables back up and just kind of work our way through them here one by one. And while I was wiping, I noticed something. This bottom bracket is flippity floppity. Upon closer inspection, you can see it right down in here, flopping around. So that's pretty concerning because it seems like threads should be holding it into place. But we're gonna investigate. So pull those cranks off and take a look at the bottom bracket. 
You'd think I'd learned my lesson by now, but I see a bike like this that's so clean with so few miles on it and I get excited and I'm like, okay, you know, it's like, it's be an easy one. 20 minute tune up, you know, just gotta go through and clean it, lube it and, do it and adjust it. That's really what I thought with this because this is the first time I've touched this bottom bracket. Like you should always check bottom brackets, tires, chains, just to know how much you gotta dump into the bikes. Now I do enough volume that it's okay. I can eat it once in a while. You know, if I gotta go down a rabbit hole like this, Hopefully I don't discover terrible, terrible things here. But this is where things go south. Discovering when we discover potentially catastrophic problems like stripped bottom bracket threads. I think we should just be able to tighten it up. I think it just came loose. Oh man, it just keeps spinning. Yeah, we might have a bad frame here. Oh boy, let's see what happens. We're gonna try a few things here before we just jump to worst case scenarios. See if we can rescue. I mean, there's still threads in there. Not very deep. Yeah, there's hope here. Let's see what happens. Okay, I've got a pretty nice 68 by 113 Shimano BNUN55. These are bomb proof. Oh man, it's just sliding right in there. Yep. Let's chop. Bummer, That's a, that frame is shot. What a nice bike, what a bummer deal. Okay, bike farmers, so it's, uh, it was a split second for you and a couple of days for me. But yesterday I went to the local bike co-op and I got us a new frame. So looks pretty much the same, right? Just different color, it says Trek on the side of it. We like that. Famous last words, but I think it's gonna be a seamless transfer of parts. Oh boy, why did I say it out loud? I think what I'll do is I'll throw the orange bike in the other stand and put this one in this stand and then transfer parts one by one and you can kind of see the process of doing a frame swap. This is when things get expensive and probably won't make any money on this bike, but I'm too deep into it to back away now, so might as well make a bike, you know, Little bit of everything here. So it's Build-A-Bike time. There's nothing wrong with the old bottom bracket and crank. I'm gonna just reuse it, grease it up. Ooh, that's a lot. Grease it up good, good and greasy. Mm, greasy. Good and tight. Throw in this side. Grease our tapers here. Grease the threads on our bolts. Just gonna go ahead and clip all the cable ends off and then loosen all the cables. I think we can reuse them. Frames are about the same size and the cable stops are in roughly the same place. You know, it's this can be tricky. I might find more surprises, things I haven't picked up on yet. But if we do that, so now with all our cables disconnected, we can just pop this whole thing off. Oh, drop my wrench. Go. Working 
handlebars are out. Get your race rocket. Top cup off. Bottom. Okay, back over here on the Trek thing. Man, this is the old press. I think this press is from the Bicycle Clinic, which is the very first little local shop where I learned how to, well, I started learning how to fix bikes when I was a wee lad. Might as well press them in straight, huh? There we go. Might as, whoop, drop the bearings. Might as well throw a little more grease on it though. Grease the bearings here. Don't forget your spacers. Oh, we're gonna have to either space this fork out or do some cutting. Let's see how far off are we? We're off by quite a bit there. Hmm, I'm gonna think about that. So we have to either lob that off or add some spacers. It's a little bit more, and that's gonna be goofy on this bike if I go way up with it. This is gonna go to a kid, I'm pretty sure. It's already got the upright stem. I think I have a plan, but it's gotta come apart. I'm gonna do a little of both. I'm gonna add a, a spacer and cut some off. First thing I want to do is pound that star nut down a little bit. So I got to find a long enough bolt. So I just kind of stick a bolt in the top. There's a tool for this, but it only goes down so far. And I want it to go in straight. Okay. So we'll go down that far. Knocked her down about an inch, maybe. And then the saw guide here. Put the steer tube in the saw guide. Line things up good. Should be about right. You could measure all this and cut once, or just guess. I have a cordless sawzall that I bought for this, but it's in the other shop and I didn't feel like going to get it. I should have gotten it. Oh, now I'm sweaty. find a spacer. Okay, so with things chopped off, I found a nice big spacer. We'll kind of check it here. Oh, maybe that one spacer will do it. Hey, what a good guess. It's perfect. Let's grab our top cap here. Hopefully I have enough room for the top cap now. Looks like it. Figure out how to use this wrench. L-shaped hexagonal wrenches can be just baffling for people like me. Okay, so something is amiss. Need to add a spacer, I believe. Maybe this top cap was bottoming out. Like I said, Seamless transition of parts. Yep, everything's bottoming out now all of a sudden. Actually, yeah. So we're just gonna add a spacer. 
and I'm gonna pound that star nut in just a smidge. All right, try to get things back in order here. A lot to hold on to. There's all that. Oh, now we're cooking with gas. Man, just make it easy. There we go. Give it a quick eyeball, it looks pretty good. We'll check that at the very end when we get the bike on the ground, see if everything's straight. Get that preload adjusted properly, but up in the stand, that feels really good. So this uh, chain needs to be broken. And I always push the pins to the outside of the bike when I break a chain, just because it's easier to put together then. And I think I just pushed that pin all the way through. So we'll probably end up using a quick link anyway. With the chain off, it's easy to get the derailleurs off. Pop the rear one off quick. This kickstand would like to be relieved of its duties on this bike. There we go. And this seat collar seems to be the last piece. There it is, garbage frame. Are we gonna get lucky? Yes, we are. We sure are. Oh, wrong size. So we'll have to find a seat post. All right, I did just find a seat post. Took a little coercion, but I got it in there. And I like to have them clamped there. Puts the bike in a better position for me to work on it. All right, these brakes have some corrosion on them. I'm gonna hit them with some one step where I need to get a new bottle. Oh, it's dying. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Just kind of work it in there. Get some grease on these posts too. That's the nice thing about building from a frame up is all the opportunities to get things clean and lubed along the way. Let the lube soak into these brakes and they're nice and shiny then. Aesthetically pleasing. Okay, starting to get there. Got the rear derailleur here. Pretty good one. Pretty bomb proof. Now it's pretty greasy. Good. Move on over here to the front ski. It's a little high. Knock it down a smidge. A little more. There we go. Just a millimeter or two of clearance over that big chain ring. So we, I pushed the pin all the way through this chain, which is fine because I was able to find a nine speed chain link or quick link. So I'm just gonna 
push the next pin through. I usually do the chain with the wheel on the bike, so I'm really guessing here. But we can add a link or two if we need to. Oh, why the struggle? It says nine speed on it. Okay. God. Not too long ago, I thought I was gonna put these cranks in the bin, so I took the pedals off. So now I get to put the pedals back on. Get this kickstand put on here. There we go. kind of eyeball it for now. Oh, drop my wrench. Okay, over here on Woody Charlson. This is a kid's bike, so they're gonna ride it. And when they're done riding it, they're gonna throw it on the ground and that's gonna bend the derailleur hanger. It's gonna push on the derailleur. Bend the derailleur hanger. And they're gonna get on the bike and see the big thumb lever. And they're gonna push it in all the way. And then they're gonna take off and overshift and throw the chain down here where there actually is a spoke protector. It was hiding. Huh. I was gonna add a dork disc, but there's one on here. Look at that. Thought it was missing. Why don't they make them all like that? That would settle the debate, right? You know, because you guys all think they're dork discs, but if it's hiding, then nobody thinks you're a dork for doing what's smart. Yeah, I know. There's a video out there where he like proves that it's not that big of a deal. But I know kids better. My kids are older than Seth's. Everybody talks about Seth. Good guy. He's got a great channel. Totally jealous. Okay. But that's a stupid video. I should link to it. I should do a whole debunking that video. It's not a bad idea. Okay. Never mind. Let's see how these wheels look. They look dirty. But not too bad. It's very straight. Okay. Behold the wonders of Dawn Power Wash. And the wonders of a dirty rag. Not a completely filthy, absolutely grungy, greasy, yucky, make everything dirtier rag, but a medium, a medium dirty rag. But if you just kind of hit it with some Dawn Power Wash, go through and wipe everything down, it really makes things look a lot better. Remember, we're cleaning, lubing, and adjusting. Probably should have cleaned things a little bit when I had that cassette off. Just a couple of spots to touch up here on the rim. Nothing major, just a few quick tweaks. Get it all straightened out, just exactly perfect. And we can do the exact same thing to the front wheel. It's just a little bit easier because you don't have to work around that cassette. Hey bike farmers, a quick note. If you're looking to get serious about fixing bikes at home, look no further than the Park Tool AK5 Toolkit. I have an affiliate link in the description. This kit provides all the basic tools you'll need to tune up just about any of the bikes that you see on this channel. It also comes with the big blue book of bicycle repair written by Calvin over at Park Tool. Also in the description are affiliate links for all the basic things that I use. The grease, the degreaser, the one step, the Dawn Power Wash, Behold. If you see anything else that I don't already have a link for, let me know in the comments so I can add it. I hope these affiliate links will help encourage you to take this on as a hobby or even start flipping bikes for a living like I do. I think I just finished up this wheel. Okay, we're about to have a bicycle here. 
Not a completely tuned and functional bicycle, but a two-wheeled rideable object. Here we go. Chain length looks good. Chain line looks good. We shall proceed. So everything's lubed from before, right? We already did that. Here's a rear brake cable. That detangled here. Untangled? Detangled. Which is it? Let me know in the comments. Should fight about it. Pick sides. Find out what Donald Trump thinks is right and then base a vote on it. Stick with the important issues here. Find out the right way to say it and then insist that it's your God-given right to say it the other way and that it's just the elitists at the universities that tell you that it's right, but really you get to decide it what's right for yourself if it's untangled or detangled and get angry about it. Social commentary, pick a side so we can fight about it. Okay, I'm gonna have to change the brake pads. Not change them, but realign them. We'll do a brake adjustment here in a minute. Get done rewiring the spike. Is it rewiring or is it recabling? Let me know in the comments. We can fight about it. Okay, okay, I'll stop. A lot of my customers call them brake wires instead of cables. And I don't care, it's fine. Uh, da -da -da. I think we'll go that way with it. Look at that, ooh, baby. Oh, I think my cable's too short. Wonder if it means this one's gonna be too short too. So this cable stop is smooshed in right there. There's not enough room for the cable to get through. Just unbend it. There's another one you can, never mind. Oh, and then that housing's too short. So we'll need a longer piece of housing there. We'll notice this one too is also bent on this side. That piece is good. This is fine. But I can tell that we're gonna need new cable and a new length of housing. So we can take this rear cable and use it for the front and then replace the rear cable. So I'm gonna cut a new piece of housing a little bit longer for this. Okay, piece of housing for here. It's right there, and right there. That's a little long. Snip a little off. Then I take a poker tool. Ooh, that's filthy. We're using the ferrules. I like them. There, that's good. Don't know how much of this you'll be able to see, but there's a little plastic screw back here in these shifters. I always forget to put them back. It just kind of keeps the dust out. But that's how you get your cable out. Okay, and that cable's perfectly good. It's just too short for the rear. It's fine for the front. Put the new cable in. And this is a slick cable. And there's already lube inside that housing. I'm totally okay with just putting it in. So this is a brand new piece of housing. So I'm gonna pull the cable and lube it as we go here.
Okay, we're gonna get this cable out. Maybe. There we go. And I like to do myself a favor and I clip that cable. So this is the old rear cable and I clip it off just past where it was clamped. That really helps to keep things from fraying. Okay, so get that through there. Feed our cable through. Oh, I wanted to start fraying, so you gotta be careful. I just kind of twist the cable back up and make it nice and clean for doing this kind of stuff. This is where you get yourself in trouble. And it can get hung up on the ferrule coming through the other end, so take your time there too. Came out clean. So that feels a little loose to me. I like to grab one side with the pliers, loosen the anchor, give it a snug. I'll try that again, there we go. And give it a good, good tight down, good tightening. And if you find your cable end, I don't want it to start fraying. There we go. Nice and clean. The cable's probably perfect. hesitating just a bit to come down. So I'm gonna turn this barrel adjuster in a half a turn. And then I'm gonna grab this empty bottle of One Step and get the last tiny bit of juice out of it. Just kind of hit the chain. That was awkward. Many railiers. Wipe off some of the grunge. Time to floss the rear derailleur. Kind of wipe off a few things as I go here as we near the end of this project. Up here to the front. Oh, my rear brake is rubbing. Front derailleur is just about perfect. We're gonna turn this limit screw in a smidge. It felt like it wanted to overshift. Make sure it's not rubbing. Back it out just a quarter turn. I have to let a little bit of cable out of that rear brake. It's just too tight. I'm gonna add some tension to my brakes preemptively. And then, as I mentioned before, just because the geometry on these bikes is a little different, 
we're gonna have to readjust these brake pads. It wants to come up just a smidge. Get the other side here quick. Okay, add a little bit of tension here. Not quite enough. I'm gonna release tension from this side. Ooh, getting there. I'm gonna add some back. There it is. There's the fine, fine tuning right there. There's always a spot. Okay, I just squeezed the lever really hard and I hadn't tightened my anchor down. So now, get that sorted. S-O-R-D-I-D, sorted. Oh, drop the cable tip. For those of you drinking to my opes, you're welcome. Oh, that's gonna stop the hardiest of rider. You know, not enough travel, so just a real fine adjustment here. There, that's better. Want a little bit of wiggle room. that little screw that I said I always forget. Saw it sitting there on my counter. Throw some air in these tires. I'm gonna make sure that this rim really is a pressed valve rim. It appears to be so. My customers want straighter valves instead of those new, fancy, new, never seen a valve like this before. This new thing here. And then I get to go, well, actually, Presta valves came before Schrader valves and they're superior in every way. And then people in the comments from Europe are like, do Americans still use Schrader valves, really? In Europe, the Presta valves are standard. Why don't people know that in America? The answer is because Americans are stupid. I've learned a lot in the comments. So thank you for that. Really been trying to find ways to increase my cynicism. So the comment section of the Bike Farmer YouTube channel. Actually, most of you are very nice and appreciative and I, I really do appreciate it. I, I like it. Um, and I actually like the grumpy, cynical, know-it-all comments too. But it does make me cynical. I have far more human interaction after starting this channel in the comment section than I've ever had in my entire life. I'm connecting with a lot more people. Actually overwhelmingly positive in general. It's been fascinating. I can already tell that things aren't aligned. But all that's easier to do when the bike's on the ground. So here we go with the bike on the ground. Pretty sure this one's gonna go to a middle school boy, would be my guess. And he's gonna be approximately that tall. Oh man, that cable housing right on that bolt. Oh well, not a big enough deal to do anything about it. But something to consider for next the next build. Either go above it or below it, make it that much easier. Okay, I stand over the bike like this, get a bird's eye view of it. And the headset felt good in the stand. So as long as we firm that nothing's loose, so squeeze the front brake, rock the bike back and forth, and I'm not feeling anything, so I'm good with that. There's a tiny bit of rust forming in these bolt heads. So I'm gonna take a little bit of steel wool, try to knock a bit of it down, and then I'm gonna squirt it with tri-flow. And then while I'm at it, I just put tri-flow in all the bolt heads, water bottles, and it kind of coats everything with a little bit of Teflon so it doesn't rust. Crank bolts, whatever. Man, that's a good looking bike. Would you look at it? I think you ought to look at it. 
right? Dior 9 speed, shiny, red, white, and blue. Right? It's got a good stance to it, nice and comfortable. I mean, that's as durable as it gets. Somebody's gonna get a really nice bike. Okay, bike farmers, this one's done. I think it turned out fantastic. I like this Trek frame better than the Diamondback frame. Diamondback frame was aluminum, it was a little bit lighter. I think it was actually kind of a nicer frame. Uh, this is just a, a bottom of the line Trek 820 chromoly Taiwanese frame, you know, nothing special. However, it looks great. I think the geometry is a little bit better. Uh, definitely turn this into a multi-purpose, bombing around town, hit the trails, whatever. And then with the nicer components, the nine-speed Dior drivetrain and the better wheels and that kind of thing, it's just that much more durable. So this is a last the rest of your lifetime kind of bike. And uh, it's a small, medium frame, so it's likely going to be for a shorter adult or a kid. But for my clientele, it's absolutely perfect. Now, if we run the numbers, I think I probably had about 100 bucks into the Diamondback when I started. Um, you know, we got to kind of count that in. Um, this frame was 35 bucks. It was an extra couple hours of labor to do everything or maybe total, I guess. And I bill at $90 an hour. So if you factor that in, we're at what? 135 plus 180. Uh, uh, so we're over 300 bucks. You know, I could break even with this at 350, you know. Um, I'm gonna put 399 on it and not make a lot of money on this bike. However, I almost guarantee you that it's gonna come back in on a trade-in someday. This bike's gonna last forever. It's a small town. I get a lot of bikes back. You know, this kid will ride it for a couple of years and then it'll get traded up for a college bike. So I am very confident in this build that it'll be a super easy tune-up and I'm gonna sell it again someday. So I'll still be making money either way. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Sorry about uh, the social commentary. Got a little grumpy there for a hot minute. Um, it's always fun. We'll talk more about that in the future. The best way you can support this channel is by watching all the way to the end, which you've already done if you're hearing me say this. Um, still, uh, this doesn't happen in a vacuum. I depend on this income and the AdSense money is okay, but not enough. So you gotta like, you gotta subscribe. The super thanks help a ton. Uh, become a member, um, share this stuff, do whatever you can. Um, I really appreciate all of it. Make the comments, start a fight in the comments. I love reading that stuff. No, 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 tell everybody how nice they are. Tell everybody you love them. And most of all, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you and your bike can stay tuned.